We make this promise to one another because it makes a difference to a mother who needs help feeding her kids while she's looking for work. It makes a difference to a father who needs help paying the rent while learning the skills to get a new and better job. And denying families that security is just plain cruel. We're a better country than that. We don't abandon our fellow Americans when times get tough. We keep the faith with them until they start that new job. Right. Even if it takes forever. Welcome back. Steve Malzberg show. That was President Obama uh, demagoguing the uh, unemployment benefits extension issue, uh, said that Republicans went home before they addressed it. Of course, Harry Reid didn't uh, didn't do anything uh, either to uh, <laughs> to take it up in the Senate before he went home. And Obama didn't do anything about it or, or try to call people together. He signed the budget that had nothing to do with unemployment extension. And then he went to Hawaii where Michelle still lingers. That's right. I think she's going to be celebrating her 50th birthday in Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's coming up very, very soon. So her daughters are back at school, and her husband's back in Washington, and she decided to just stay a little longer in Hawaii. She liked it so much. Hey, why not? Why not stay in the birthplace of your husband? Why not? You know, for as long as humanly possible. All right, folks, uh, joining us right now is uh, our friend David Fredoso, editor, conservative intelligence briefing and Washington Examiner columnist. Hello, David. Happy New Year. Hey, happy New Year to you. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, the uh, unemployment uh, benefit extension. Look, this was only a matter of time. Once they signed the budget, once it had nothing to do with the unemployment benefits weren't addressed, I knew that the demagoguery, the class warfare, it would all start, and it started. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, what, what I think is the most, um, well, the, the worst part of this debate has been the way, the dishonesty with which they have pointed to the one state that actually did discontinue uh, its participation. North, North Carolina, uh, right? Yeah, North Carolina. They, uh, they cut it off in July, which means that they went back to their normal state length of unemployment benefits, which depending on the employment rate there, uh, unemployment rate there is between uh, 12 and, and 20 weeks of benefits instead of the federal one, which can be anywhere up to, I, I think at this point, uh, the, the state with the longest, it can be up to something in the 70s, 70 some weeks. Um, well, you, you know, couple problems here. One is that the states actually have to borrow from the federal government for this program, and that was what got the people in North Carolina kind of upset, and that was why they reduced benefits, which, which you know, made them, uh, it, it disqualified them for the federal program. The other thing is that you have a lot of people pointing to North Carolina saying, oh, it's gotten so horrible there, and all these things have happened, and they're all using the numbers to lie. They're all using the numbers in misleading ways that make it look like something bad happened, when in fact, Almost everything, almost every statistic on employment in North Carolina has improved since they cut off benefits in July. Um, job creation for the five months, we have five months of stats for after they did it in July, right? So the five months leading up to it, if you compare it to the five months afterward, you actually lost uh, thir about what? It, 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 just to go through the, the litany here, okay? 56,000 North Carolinians dropped out of the labor force in that five-month period before the benefits were cut off. After they were cut off, that number went down. Only 39,000 dropped out. So you attribute Sorry, that, yeah. you attribute that, David, to... I'm not become... saying I attribute it. What yeah. I'm saying is... Stats are stats, yeah. Point here. yeah. There's no disaster going on. Right. I mean, everything has actually gotten better. You might make the argument that it's gotten better because of that, but... But it's at least something that has credibility because it has gotten better. Before it happened, you had 31,000 jobs disappear in that five-month period. All right, now, five now, months afterward, you had 22,000 jobs come into existence. Right. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter which number you look at. You look and you say, actually, it looks like things have actually improved in that state since they, they shortened the benefits. Right, so, so, so how do Republicans win on this issue? I mean, you know, they're, again, they're willing to extend it. If, if the president and the Democrats could find some, some, somewhere else to cut to pay for it. Right. right. Paul said that. You others know, pay, it, others said that. But they're not going to even address that. They're not going to cut anything else. They're going to demagogue this. And how do Republicans overcome that? Yeah, they, they really can't in the current framework. And that's why, you know, this, this battle is almost certain to be lost. But, but among the proposals that have been, you know, one of the, the theories for why North Carolina has improved goes something like this. Job seekers 
not because they're lazy and watching videos for the 99 or what, however many weeks they have benefits, but job seekers perfectly rationally, because they have enough to, to get them by for a while, when they get a job offer, they're more likely to say, eh, I bet I can do better than this. This isn't as good a job as I had in 2007. This job isn't as, you know, right. uh, it doesn't pay as much. It's not quite in line with my skill set as much. When the benefits period is shortened, people tend to take what's available. And what we've seen over the last six years is that what's, what's available isn't getting that much better. Uh, we're not creating that many jobs. We're not creating as many well-paying jobs right. as we used to have. And, uh, you know, what we're doing right now is we're spending a lot of money to give people a few more months to figure out that the job market that they're in. And I know, I know. It, 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 it's a real quandary. Uh, and, and, again, I don't know how Republicans win it either. Kevin, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> David, thank you. David Ferdoso, uh, Washington Examiner, Editor, Conservative Intelligence Briefing. We'll speak to you soon. Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.